Job Chapters 1 to 42. Chapter 1 Circumstances of Job. 1 There was a man in the land of Uz, whose name was Job, and that man was blameless and upright, and one that feared God, and turned away from evil. 2 And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. 3 His possessions also were seven thousand sheep, and three thousand camels, and five hundred yoke of oxen, and five hundred female donkeys, and a very great household, so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east. Four and his sons went and feasted in their houses, every one on his day, and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. Five and it was so, when the days of their feasting were finished, that Job sent and sanctified them, and rose up early in the morning, and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all, for Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned, and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. First Assault of Satan. 6 Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. 7 And the Lord said unto Satan, From where come you? Then Satan answered the Lord, and said, From going to and fro on the earth, and from walking up and down on it. 8 And the Lord said unto Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a blameless and an upright man, one that fears God, and turns away from evil? 9 Then Satan answered the Lord, and said, Does Job fear God for nothing? 10 Have not you made a hedge about him, and about his house, and about all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands, and his possessions are increased in the land. 11 But put forth your hand now, and touch all that he has, and he will curse you to your face. 12 And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your power, only upon himself put not forth your hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. 13 And there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. 14 And there came a messenger unto Job, and said, The oxen were plowing, and the donkeys feeding beside them. 15 And the Sabaeans fell upon them, and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I alone am escaped to tell you. 16 While he was yet speaking, there came also another, and said, The fire of God has fallen from heaven, and has burned up the sheep, and the servants, and consumed them, and I alone am escaped to tell you. 17 While he was yet speaking, there came also another, and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands, and fell upon the camels, and have carried them away, yea, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I alone am escaped to tell you. 18 While he was yet speaking, there came also another, and said, Your sons and your daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. 19 And, behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness, and struck the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young men, and they are dead, and I alone am escaped to tell you. 20 Then Job arose, and tore his mantle, and shaved his head, and fell down upon the ground, and worshipped. 21 And said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return there. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away, blessed be the name of the Lord. 22 In all this Job sinned not, nor charged God with wrong. Chapter 2 Second Assault of Satan 1 Again there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. 2 And the Lord said unto Satan, From where come you? And Satan answered the Lord, and said, From going to and fro on the earth, and from walking up and down on it. 3 And the Lord said unto Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a blameless and an upright man, one that fears God, and turns away from evil? And still he holds fast his integrity, although you moved me against him, to destroy him without cause. For and Satan answered the Lord, and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man has will he give for his life. 5 But put forth your hand now, and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse you to your face. 6 And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in your hand, but spare his life. 
7 So went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord, and struck Job with painful boils from the sole of his foot unto the crown of his head. 8 And he took himself a potsherd to scrape himself with, and he sat down among the ashes. 9 Then said his wife unto him, Do you still retain your integrity? Curse God, and die. 10 But he said unto her, You speak as one of the foolish women speaks. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God, and shall we not receive evil? In all this did not Job sin with his lips. Job's friends come to mourn with him. 11 Now when Job's three friends heard of all this evil that was come upon him, they came every one from his own place, Eliphaz the Temanite, and Bildad the Shuite, and Zophar the Namathite, for they had made an appointment together to come to mourn with him and to comfort him. 12 And when they lifted up their eyes afar off, and knew him not, they lifted up their voice, and wept, and they tore every one his mantle, and sprinkled dust upon their heads toward heaven. 13 So they sat down with him upon the ground seven days and seven nights, and none spoke a word unto him, for they saw that his grief was very great. Chapter 3 First Speech of Job One after this opened Job his mouth, and cursed his day. 2 And Job spoke, and said, 3 Let the day perish on which I was born, and the night in which it was said, There is a male child conceived. 4 Let that day be darkness, let not God regard it from above, neither let the light shine upon it. 5 Let darkness and the shadow of death stain it, let a cloud dwell upon it, let the blackness of the day terrify it. 6 As for that night, let darkness seize upon it, let it not rejoice among the days of the year, let it not come into the number of the months. 7 Lo, let that night be solitary, let no joyful voice come into it. 8 Let them curse it that curse the day, who are ready to arouse Leviathan. 9 Let the stars of its twilight be dark, let it look for light, but have none, neither let it see the dawning of the day. 10 Because it shut not up the doors of my mother's womb, nor hid sorrow from my eyes. 11 Why died I not from the womb? Why did I not expire when I came out of the womb? 12 Why did the knees receive me? Or why the breasts that I should nurse? 13 For now should I have lain still and been quiet, I should have slept, then would I have been at rest. 14 With kings and counselors of the earth, who built desolate places for themselves, 15 Or with princes that had gold, who filled their houses with silver, 16 Or as a hidden untimely birth, I had not been, as infants who never saw light. 17 There the wicked cease from troubling, and there the weary are at rest. 18 There the prisoners rest together, they hear not the voice of the oppressor. 19 The small and great are there, and the servant is free from his master. 20 Therefore is light given to him that is in misery, and life unto the bitter in soul. 21 Who long for death, but it comes not, and dig for it more than for hidden treasures. 22 Who rejoice exceedingly, and are glad, when they can find the grave. 23 Why is light given to a man whose way is hid, and whom God has hedged in? 24 For my sighing comes before I eat, and my groanings are poured out like the waters. 25 For the thing which I greatly feared has come upon me, and that which I was afraid of has come unto me. 26 I was not at ease, neither had I quiet, neither was I at rest, yet trouble came. Chapter 4 Innocent are protected from suffering. One then Eliphaz the Temanite answered and said, Two if we venture to converse with you, will you be grieved? But who can withhold himself from speaking? Three behold, you have instructed many, and you have strengthened the weak hands. Four your words have upheld him that was falling, and you have strengthened the feeble knees. Five but now it is come upon you, and you faint, it touches you, and you are troubled. 6 Is not this your fear, your confidence, your hope, and the uprightness of your ways? 7 Remember, I pray you, whoever perished, being innocent. Or where were the righteous cut off? 8 Even as I have seen, they that plow iniquity, and sow wickedness, reap the same. 9 By the blast of God they perish, and by the breath of his nostrils are they consumed. 10 The roaring of the lion, and the voice of the fierce lion, and the teeth of the young lions, are broken. 
11. The old lion perishes for lack of prey, and the strong lion's whelps are scattered abroad. 12. Now a thing was secretly brought to me, and my ear received a whisper of it. 13. In thoughts from the visions of the night, when deep sleep falls on men, 14. Fear came upon me, and trembling, which made all my bones to shake. 15. Then a spirit passed before my face, the hair of my flesh stood up, 16. It stood still, but I could not discern its form, an image was before my eyes, there was silence, and I heard a voice, saying, 17. Shall mortal man be more just than God? Shall a man be more pure than his maker? 18. Behold, he put no trust in his servants, and his angels he charged with folly, 19. How much less in them that dwell in houses of clay, whose foundation is in the dust, who are crushed before the moth. 20. They are destroyed from morning to evening, they perish forever without any regarding it. 21. Does not their excellence which is in them go away? They die, even without wisdom. Chapter 5. Eliphaz believes that Job is a fool. One call now, if there be any that will answer you, and to which of the holy ones will you turn? Two for wrath kills the foolish man, and envy slays the simple one. Three I have seen the foolish taking root, but suddenly I cursed his habitation. Four his children are far from safety, and they are crushed in the gate, neither is there any to deliver them. Five whose harvest the hungry eats up, and takes it even out of the thorns, and the robber swallows up their wealth. 6. For affliction comes not forth from the dust, neither does trouble spring out of the ground. 7. Yet man is born unto trouble, as the sparks fly upward. Eliphaz tells Job to not despise the discipline of God. 8. I would seek unto God, and unto God would I commit my cause. 9. Who does great things and unsearchable, marvelous things without number. 10. Who gives rain upon the earth, and sends waters upon the fields. 11. To set up on high those that are low, that those who mourn may be lifted to safety. 12. He frustrates the devices of the crafty, so that their hands cannot perform their plans. 13. He takes the wise in their own craftiness, and the counsel of the cunning is quickly ended. 14. They meet with darkness in the daytime, and grope in the noonday as in the night. 15. But he saves the poor from the sword, from their mouth, and from the hand of the mighty. 16. So the poor has hope, and injustice shuts her mouth. 17. Behold, happy is the man whom God corrects, therefore despise not the chastening of the Almighty. 18. For he bruises, and binds up, he wounds, and his hands make whole. 19. He shall deliver you in six troubles, yea, in seven there shall no evil touch you. 20. In famine he shall redeem you from death, and in war from the power of the sword. 21. You shall be hid from the scourge of the tongue, neither shall you be afraid of destruction when it comes. 22. At destruction and famine you shall laugh, neither shall you be afraid of the beasts of the earth. 23. For you shall be in covenant with the stones of the field, and the beasts of the field shall be at peace with you. 24. And you shall know that your tabernacle shall be in peace, and you shall visit your habitation, and shall find nothing amiss. 25. You shall know also that your descendants shall be many, and your offspring is the grass of the earth. 26. You shall come to your grave in a full age, like a shock of grain comes in in its season. 27. Lo this, we have searched it out, so it is, hear it, and know you it for your good. Chapter 6. Job's Great Anguish. 1. But Job answered and said, 2. Oh that my grief were thoroughly weighed, and my calamity laid in the balances together. 3. For now it would be heavier than the sand of the sea, therefore my words are swallowed up. 4. For the arrows of the Almighty are within me, the poison thereof drinks up my spirit, the terrors of God do set themselves in array against me. 5. Does the wild donkey bray when it has grass? Or the ox lows over its fodder? 6. Can that which is tasteless be eaten without salt? Or is there any taste in the white of an egg? 7. The things that my soul refused to touch are as loathsome food to me. 8. Oh that I might have my request, and that God would grant me the thing that I long for. 9. Even that it would please God to destroy me, that he would let loose his hand, and cut me off. 10. Then should I still have comfort, 
Yea, I would exult myself in sorrow, let him not spare, for I have not concealed the words of the Holy One. 11. What is my strength, that I should hope? And what is my end, that I should prolong my life? 12. Is my strength the strength of stones? Or is my flesh of bronze? 13. Is not my help within me? And is wisdom driven quite from me? Job asks his friends to show him pity. 14. To him that is afflicted pity should be shown from his friend, even though he forsakes the fear of the Almighty. 15. My brethren have dealt deceitfully as a brook, and as the stream of brooks that pass away, 16. Which are black by reason of the ice, and in which the snow is hid, 17. At what time they become warm, they vanish, when it is hot, they vanish out of their place. 18. The paths of their way turn aside, they go nowhere, and perish. 19. The caravans of Tima looked, the travelers of Sheba waited for them. 20. They were disappointed because they had confidence, they came there, and were confused. 21. For now you are nothing, you see my terror, and are afraid. 22. Did I say, bring unto me? Or, give a reward for me of your substance. 23. Or, deliver me from the enemy's hand. Or, redeem me from the hand of the mighty. 24. Teach me, and I will hold my tongue, and cause me to understand how I have erred. 25. How forceful are right words. But what does your arguing prove? 26. Do you intend to reprove words, and the speeches of one that is desperate, which are as wind? 27. Yea, you overwhelm the fatherless, and you dig a pit for your friend. 28. Now therefore be content, look upon me, for it is evident unto you if I lie. 29. Return, I pray you, let it not be injustice, yea, return again, my righteousness is in it. 30. Is there iniquity in my tongue? Cannot my taste discern perverse things? Chapter 7. Job questions God's continuing trials. 1. Is there not an appointed time to man upon earth? Are not his days also like the days of a hireling? 2. As a servant earnestly desires the shadow, and as a hireling looks for the reward of his work, 3. So am I made to possess months of vanity, and wearisome nights are appointed to me. 4. When I lie down, I say, when shall I arise, and the night be gone? And I am full of tossings to and fro unto the dawning of the day. 5. My flesh is clothed with worms and clods of dust, my skin is broken, and become loathsome. 6. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle, and are spent without hope. 7. O oh, remember that my life is a breath, my eye shall no more see good. 8. The eye of him that has seen me shall see me no more, your eyes are upon me, and I am not. 9. As the cloud is consumed and vanishes away, so he that goes down to the grave shall come up no more. 10. He shall return no more to his house, neither shall his place know him any more. 11. Therefore I will not restrain my mouth, I will speak in the anguish of my spirit, I will complain in the bitterness of my soul. 12. Am I a sea, or a sea monster, that you set a watch over me? 13. When I say, my bed shall comfort me, my couch shall ease my complaint, 14. Then you scare me with dreams, and terrify me through visions, 15. So that my soul chooses strangling, and death rather than my life. 16. I loathe it, I would not live always, let me alone, for my days are vanity. 17. What is man, that you should magnify him? And that you should set your heart upon him? 18. And that you should visit him every morning, and test him every moment. 19. How long will you not look away from me, nor let me alone till I swallow down my spittle? 20. I have sinned, what shall I do unto you, O you preserver of men? Why have you set me as a mark against you, so that I am a burden to myself? 21. And why do you not pardon my transgression, and take away my iniquity? For now shall I sleep in the dust, and you shall seek me in the morning, but I shall not be. Chapter 8. First Speech of Bildad. One then answered Bildad the Shuite, and said, To how long will you speak these things? And how long shall the words of your mouth be like a strong wind? 3. Does God pervert judgment? Or does the Almighty pervert justice? 
For if your children have sinned against him, and he has cast them away for their transgression, 5 If you would seek unto God early, and make your supplication to the Almighty, 6 If you were pure and upright, surely now he would awake for you, and make the habitation of your righteousness prosperous. 7 Though your beginning was small, yet your latter end should greatly increase. 8 For inquire, I pray you, of the former age, and prepare yourself to the findings of their fathers. 9 For we are but of yesterday, and know nothing, because our days upon earth are a shadow. 10 Shall not they teach you, and tell you, and utter words out of their heart? 11 Can the papyrus grow up without a marsh? Can the reeds grow without water? 12 While it is yet green, and not cut down, it withers before any other plant. 13 So are the paths of all that forget God, and the hypocrite's hope shall perish. 14 Whose confidence shall be cut off, and whose trust shall be a spider's web. 15 He shall lean upon his house, but it shall not stand. He shall hold it fast, but it shall not endure. 16 He grows green in the sun, and his branch shoots forth in his garden. 17 His roots are wrapped about the stone heap, and looks for a place in the stones. 18 If he is destroyed from his place, then it will deny him, saying, I have not seen you. 19 Behold, this is the joy of his way, and out of the earth shall others grow. 20 Behold, God will not cast away a blameless man, neither will he help the evil doers. 21 Till he fills your mouth with laughing, and your lips with rejoicing. 22 They that hate you shall be clothed with shame, and the dwelling place of the wicked will come to nothing. Chapter 9. Job Answers His Friends. 1 Then Job answered and said, 2 I know it is so of a truth, but how should man be just before God? 3 If he will contend with him, he cannot answer him one of a thousand. 4 He is wise in heart, and mighty in strength, who has hardened himself against him, and has prospered. 5 Who removes the mountains, and they know not, who overturns them in his anger. 6 Who shakes the earth out of its place, and the pillars thereof tremble. 7 Who commands the sun, and it rises not, and seals up the stars. 8 Who alone spreads out the heavens, and treads upon the waves of the sea. 9 Who makes the bear, Orion, and Pleiades, and the chambers of the south. 10 Who does great things past finding out, yea, and wonders without number. 11 Lo, he goes by me, and I see him not. He passes on also, but I perceive him not. 12 Behold, he takes away, who can hinder him? Who will say unto him, What do you? 13 If God will not withdraw his anger, the proud helpers do bow before him. 14 How much less shall I answer him, and choose out my words to reason with him? 15 For, though I were righteous, yet could I not answer, but I would make supplication to my judge. 16 If I had called, and he had answered me, yet would I not believe that he had hearkened unto my voice. 17 For he breaks me with a tempest, and multiplies my wounds without cause. 18 He will not permit me to take my breath, but fills me with bitterness. 19 If I speak of strength, lo, he is strong, and if of justice, who shall set me a time to plead? 20 If I justify myself, my own mouth shall condemn me. If I say, I am blameless, it shall also prove me perverse. 21 Though I were blameless, yet would I not know my soul, I would despise my life. 22 This is one thing, therefore I said it, he destroys the blameless and the wicked. 23 If the scourge slays suddenly, he will laugh at the plight of the innocent. 24 The earth is given into the hand of the wicked, he covers the faces of its judges, if not he, who then is it? 25 Now my days are swifter than a runner, they flee away, they see no good. 26 They are passed away as the swift ships, as the eagle that hastens to the prey. 27 If I say, I will forget my complaint, I will leave off my heaviness, and comfort myself. 28 I am afraid of all my sorrows, I know that you will not hold me innocent. 29 If I am wicked, why then labor I in vain? 30 If I wash myself with snow water, and make my hands ever so clean, 31 Yet shall you plunge me in the ditch, and my own clothes shall abhor me.
32 For he is not a man, as I am, that I should answer him, and we should come together in trial. 33 Neither is there any mediator between us, that might lay his hand upon us both. 34 Let him take his rod away from me, and let not his fear terrify me. 35 Then would I speak, and not fear him, but it is not so with me. Chapter 10 Job questions his oppression. 1 My soul is weary of my life, I will leave my complaint upon myself, I will speak in the bitterness of my soul. 2 I will say unto God, Do not condemn me, show me why you contend with me. 3 Is it good unto you that you should oppress, that you should despise the work of your hands, and smile upon the counsel of the wicked? 4 Have you eyes of flesh? Or see you as man sees? 5 Are your days as the days of man? Are your years as man's days? 6 That you inquire after my iniquity, and search after my sin. 7 You know that I am not wicked, and there is none that can deliver out of your hand. 8 Your hands have made me and fashioned me together totally, yet you do destroy me. 9 Remember, I beseech you, that you have made me as the clay, and will you bring me into dust again? 10 Have you not poured me out as milk, and curdled me like cheese? 11 You have clothed me with skin and flesh, and have knit me together with bones and sinews. 12 You have granted me life and favor, and your care has preserved my spirit. 13 And these things have you hid in your heart, I know that this is with you. 14 If I sin, then you mark me, and you will not acquit me from my iniquity. 15 If I am wicked, woe unto me, and if I am righteous, yet can I not lift up my head. I am full of disgrace, therefore see my affliction, 16 For it increases. You hunt me as a fierce lion, and again you show yourself awesome against me. 17 You renew your witnesses against me, and increase your indignation upon me, changes in war are ever with me. 18 Why then have you brought me forth out of the womb? Oh that I had died, and no eye had seen me. 19 I would have been as though I had not been, I would have been carried from the womb to the grave. 20 Are not my days few? Cease then, and let me alone, that I may take comfort a little. 21 Before I go where I shall not return, even to the land of darkness and the shadow of death. 22 A land of darkness, as darkness itself, and of the shadow of death, without any order, and where the light is is darkness. Chapter 11 First Speech of Zophar One then answered Zophar the Namathite, and said, Two should not the multitude of words be answered. And should a man full of talk be justified? Three should your lies make men hold their peace? And when you mock, shall no man make you ashamed? Four for you have said, My doctrine is pure, and I am clean in your eyes. Five but oh that God would speak, and open his lips against you, six and that he would show you the secrets of wisdom, that they are double to that which is. Know therefore that God exacts of you less than your iniquity deserves. 7 Can you by searching find out God? Can you find out the limits of the Almighty? 8 It is as high as heaven, what can you do? Deeper than Sheol, what can you know? 9 The measure of it is longer than the earth, and broader than the sea. 10 If he cuts off, and shuts up, or gathers together, then who can hinder him? 11 For he knows vain men, he sees wickedness also, will he not then consider it? 12 For a vain man will be wise, when a man is born a wild donkey colt. 13 If you prepare your heart, and stretch out your hands toward him. 14 If iniquity be in your hand, put it far away, and let not wickedness dwell in your tents. 15 For then shall you lift up your face without spot, yea, you shall be steadfast, and shall not fear. 16 Because you shall forget your misery, and remember it is waters that pass away. 17 And your life shall be brighter than the noonday, you shall shine forth, you shall be as the morning. 18 And you shall be secure, because there is hope, yea, you shall dig about you, and take your rest in safety. 19 Also you shall lie down, and none shall make you afraid, yea, many shall entreat your favor. 20 But the eyes of the wicked shall fail, and they shall not escape, and their hope shall be as one dying. Chapter 12. Job declares only God knows truth. 
One and Job answered and said, Two no doubt you are the people, and wisdom shall die with you. Three but I have understanding as well as you, I am not inferior to you, yea, who knows not such things as these. For I am as one mocked of his neighbor, who calls upon God, and he answers him, the just upright man is laughed to scorn. Five he that is ready to slip with his feet is like a lamp despised in the thought of him that is at ease. Six the tents of robbers prosper, and they that provoke God are secure, into whose hand God brings abundantly. Seven but ask now the beasts, and they shall teach you, and the fowls of the air, and they shall tell you, eight or speak to the earth, and it shall teach you, and the fish of the sea shall declare unto you. Nine who knows not among all these that the hand of the Lord has done this. Ten in whose hand is the soul of every living thing, and the breath of all mankind. Eleven does not the ear test words, and the mouth taste its food. Twelve with the ancient is wisdom, and in length of days understanding. Thirteen with him is wisdom and strength, he has counsel and understanding. Fourteen behold, he breaks down, and it cannot be built again, he shuts up a man, and there can be no opening. Fifteen behold, he withholds the waters, and they dry up, also he sends them out, and they overturn the earth. Sixteen with him is strength and wisdom, the deceived and the deceiver are his. 17 He leads counselors away plundered, and makes the judges fools. 18 He looses the bonds of kings, and girds their loins with a waistband. 19 He leads princes away plundered, and overthrows the mighty. 20 He takes away the speech of the trustworthy, and takes away the understanding of the aged. 21 He pours contempt upon princes, and weakens the strength of the mighty. 22 He uncovers deep things out of darkness, and brings out to light the shadow of death. 23 He increases the nations, and destroys them, he enlarges the nations, and leads them away. 24 He takes away the heart of the chiefs of the people of the earth, and causes them to wander in a wilderness where there is no way. 25 They grope in the dark without light, and he makes them to stagger like a drunken man. Chapter 13 Job beseeches God to speak to him. One lo, my eye has seen all this, my ear has heard and understood it. Two what you know, the same do I know also, I am not inferior unto you. Three surely I would speak to the Almighty, and I desire to reason with God. Four but you are forgers of lies, you are all physicians of no value. Five oh that you would altogether hold your peace. And it should be your wisdom. 6. Hear now my reasoning, and hearken to the pleadings of my lips. 7. Will you speak wickedly for God? And talk deceitfully for Him? 8. Will you accept His person? Will you contend for God? 9. Is it good that He should search you out? Or as one man mocks another, do you so mock Him? 10. He will surely reprove you, if you do secretly show partiality. 11. Shall not His excellence make you afraid? and his dread fall upon you. Twelve your proverbs are like unto ashes, your defenses are defenses of clay. Thirteen hold your peace, let me alone, that I may speak, and let come on me what will. Fourteen why do I take my flesh in my teeth, and put my life in my hand? Fifteen though he slay me, yet will I trust in him, but I will defend my own ways before him. 16 He also shall be my salvation, for a hypocrite shall not come before him. 17 Hear diligently my speech, and my declaration with your ears. 18 Behold now, I have prepared my case, I know that I shall be justified. 19 Who is he that will contend with me? For now, if I hold my tongue, I shall die. 20 Only do not two things unto me, then will I not hide myself from you. 21 Withdraw your hand far from me, and let not your dread make me afraid. 22 Then call, and I will answer, or let me speak, and you answer me. 23 How many are my iniquities and sins? Make me know my transgression and my sin. 24 Why hide you your face, and hold me for your enemy? 25 Will you break a leaf driven to and fro? And will you pursue the dry stubble? 26 For you write bitter things against me, and make me possess the iniquities of my youth.
27 You put my feet also in the stocks, and watch closely all my paths, you set a bound to the soles of my feet. 28 And he, like a rotten thing, consumes, as a garment that is moth-eaten. Chapter 14 Job mourns for man has only one life. One man that is born of a woman is of few days, and full of trouble. 2 He comes forth like a flower, and is cut down, he flees also as a shadow, and continues not. 3 And do you open your eyes upon such a one, and bring me into judgment with you. 4 Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? No one. 5 Seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with you, you have appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. 6 Turn from him, that he may rest, till he shall accomplish, as a hireling, his day. 7 For there is hope for a tree, if it is cut down, that it will sprout again, and that the tender shoots thereof will not cease. 8 Though its root grows old in the earth, and its stump dies in the ground, 9 Yet at the scent of water it will bud, and bring forth branches like a plant. 10 But man dies, and wastes away, yea, man expires, and where is he? 11 As the waters fail from the sea, and the river decays and dries up, 12 So man lies down, and rises not, till the heavens be no more, they shall not awake, nor be raised out of their sleep. 13 O oh, that you would hide me in the grave, that you would conceal me, until your wrath is past, that you would appoint me a set time, and remember me. 14 If a man dies, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait, till my change comes. 15 You shall call, and I will answer you, you will have a desire to the work of your hands. 16 For now you number my steps, do not watch over my sin. 17 My transgression is sealed up in a bag, and you sew up my iniquity. 18 And surely the mountain falling, comes to nothing, and the rock is removed out of its place. 19 The waters wear the stones, you wash away the things which grow out of the dust of the earth, and you destroy the hope of man. 20 You prevail forever against him, and he passes, you change his countenance, and send him away. 21 His sons come to honor, and he knows it not, and they are brought low, but he perceives it not of them. 22 But his flesh upon him shall have pain, and his soul within him shall mourn. Chapter 15 Job's mouth condemns him. One then answered Eliphaz the Temanite, and said, Two should a wise man utter vain knowledge, and fill his belly with the east wind. Three should he reason with unprofitable talk, or with speeches with which he can do no good. Four yea, you cast off fear, and restrain prayer before God. Five for your mouth utters your iniquity, and you choose the tongue of the crafty. Six your own mouth condemns you, and not I. Yea, your own lips testify against you. 7. Are you the first man that was born? Or were you made before the hills? 8. Have you heard the counsel of God? And do you limit wisdom to yourself? 9. What know you, that we know not? What understand you, which is not in us? 10. With us are both the gray-headed and very aged men, much older than your father. 11. Are the consolations of God too small for you? On the word that deals gently with you. 12. Why does your heart carry you away? And what do your eyes wink at? 13. That you turn your spirit against God, and let such words go out of your mouth. The wicked suffer. 14. What is man, that he should be clean? And he who is born of a woman, that he should be righteous? 15. Behold, he puts no trust in his holy ones, yea, the heavens are not clean in his sight. 16 How much more abominable and filthy is man, who drinks iniquity like water? 17 I will show you, hear me, and that which I have seen I will declare, 18 Which wise men have told from their fathers, and have not hid it, 19 Unto whom alone the land was given, and no stranger passed among them. 20 The wicked man travails with pain all his days, and the number of years is hidden for the oppressor. 21 A dreadful sound is in his ears, in prosperity the destroyer shall come upon him. 22 He believes not that he shall return out of darkness, and he is waited for by the sword. 23 He wanders abroad for bread, saying, Where is it? He knows that the day of darkness is ready at his hand.
24 Trouble and anguish shall make him afraid, they shall prevail against him, as a king ready for battle. 25 For he stretches out his hand against God, and strengthens himself against the Almighty. 26 He runs stubbornly against him, with his heavily embossed shield. 27 Because he covers his face with his fatness, and makes heavy fat on his waist. 28 And he dwells in desolate cities, and in houses which no man inhabits, which are ready to become heaps. 29 He shall not be rich, neither shall his wealth continue, neither shall he overspread the earth with it. 30 He shall not depart out of darkness, the flame shall dry up his branches, and by the breath of his mouth shall he go away. 31 Let not him that is deceived trust in vanity, for futility shall be his reward. 32 It shall be accomplished before his time, and his branch shall not be green. 33 He shall shake off his unripe grapes like the vine, and shall cast off his blossom like the olive. 34 For the congregation of hypocrites shall be desolate, and fire shall consume the tents of bribery. 35 They conceive mischief, and bring forth vanity, and their heart prepares deceit. Chapter 16 Job declares his friends as miserable comforters. 1 Then Job answered and said, 2 I have heard many such things, miserable comforters are you all. 3 Shall vain words have an end? Or what emboldens you that you answer? 4 I also could speak as you do, if your soul were in my soul's place, I could heap up words against you, and shake my head at you. 5 But I would strengthen you with my mouth, and the moving of my lips would relieve your grief. Job laments over his situation. 6 Though I speak, my grief is not relieved, and though I forbear, how am I eased? 7 But now he has made me weary, you have made desolate all my company. 8 And you have filled me with wrinkles, which is a witness against me, and my leanness rising up in me bears witness to my face. 9 He tears me in his wrath, who hates me, he gnashes upon me with his teeth, my enemy sharpens his eyes upon me. 10 They have gaped upon me with their mouth, they have smitten me upon the cheek reproachfully, they have gathered themselves together against me. 11 God has delivered me to the ungodly, and turned me over into the hands of the wicked. 12 I was at ease, but he has broken me asunder, he has also taken me by my neck, and shaken me to pieces, and set me up for his mark. 13 His archers surround me, he slashes my kidneys asunder, and does not spare, he pours out my gall upon the ground. 14 He breaks me with breach upon breach, he runs upon me like a warrior. Job defends his innocence. 15 I have sewed sackcloth upon my skin, and laid my strength in the dust. 16 My face is foul from weeping, and on my eyelids is the shadow of death. 17 Not for any violence in my hands, also my prayer is pure. 18 O earth, cover not my blood, and let my cry have no place. 19 Also now, behold, my witness is in heaven, and my record is on high. 20 My friends scorn me, but my eye pours out tears unto God. 21 O oh, that one might plead for a man with God, as a man pleads for his neighbor. 22 When a few years have come, then I shall go the way where I shall not return. Chapter 17 God makes Job a byword. 1 My breath is corrupt, my days are extinct, the grave is ready for me. 2 Are there not mockers with me? And does not my eye continue in their provocation? 3 Lay down a surety for me with you, who is he that will give surety for me? 4 For you have hidden their heart from understanding therefore shall you not exalt them. 5. He that speaks flattery to his friends, even the eyes of his children shall fail. 6. He has made me also a byword of the people, and I was as one before whom men spit. 7. My eye also is dim by reason of sorrow, and all my members are like a shadow. 8. Upright men shall be astonished at this, and the innocent shall stir up himself against the hypocrite. 9. The righteous also shall hold to his way, and he that has clean hands shall be stronger and stronger. 10. But as for you all, do you return, and come now, for I cannot find one wise man among you. 11. My days are past, my purposes are broken off, even the thoughts of my heart. 
12 they change the night into day, the light is short because of darkness. 13 if I wait, the grave is my house, I have made my bed in the darkness. 14 I have said to corruption, you are my father, to the worm, you are my mother, and my sister. 15 and where is now my hope? As for my hope, who shall see it? 16 they shall go down to the gates of the pit, when our rest together is in the dust. Chapter 18, Second Speech of Bildad. One then answered Bildad the Shuite, and said, To how long will it be before you make an end of words? Consider, and afterwards we will speak. Three why are we counted as beasts, and regarded as vile in your sight? Four he tears himself in his anger, shall the earth be forsaken for you? And shall the rock be removed out of its place? Five yea, the light of the wicked shall be put out, and the flame of his fire shall not shine. Six the light shall be dark in his tent, and his lamp shall be put out with him. Seven the steps of his strength shall be shortened, and his own counsel shall cast him down. Eight for he is cast into a net by his own feet, and he walks upon a snare. Nine the trap shall take him by the heel, and a snare shall lay hold of him. Ten the noose is laid for him on the ground, and a trap for him in the way. Eleven terrors shall make him afraid on every side, and shall drive him to his feet. Twelve his strength shall be hunger bidden, and destruction shall be ready at his side. Thirteen it shall devour patches of his skin, even the firstborn of death shall devour his strength. Fourteen his confidence shall be rooted out of his tent, and it shall bring him to the king of terrors. Fifteen they shall dwell in his tent, who are none of his, brimstone shall be scattered upon his habitation. Sixteen his roots shall be dried up beneath, and above shall his branch be cut off. Seventeen his memory shall perish from the earth, and he shall have no name in the street. Eighteen he shall be driven from light into darkness, and chased out of the world. Nineteen he shall neither have son nor nephew among his people, nor any remaining in his dwellings. Twenty they that come after him shall be astounded at his day, as they that went before were frightened. Twenty one surely such are the dwellings of the wicked, and this is the place of him that knows not God. Chapter 19, Job responds to Bildad. One then Job answered and said, To how long will you torment my soul, and break me in pieces with words? Three these ten times have you reproached me, you are not ashamed that you have wronged me. Four and if indeed I have erred, my error remains with myself. Five if indeed you will magnify yourselves against me, and plead against me my reproach. Six know now that God has overthrown me, and has compassed me with his net. Seven behold, I cry out concerning wrong, but I am not heard, I cry aloud, but there is no justice. 8 He has fenced up my way that I cannot pass, and he has set darkness in my paths. 9 He has stripped me of my glory, and taken the crown from my head. 10 He has destroyed me on every side, and I am gone, and my hope has he removed like a tree. 11 He has also kindled his wrath against me, and he counts me unto him as one of his enemies. 12 His troops come together, and raise up their way against me, and encamp round about my tent. 13 He has put my brethren far from me, and my acquaintances are wholly estranged from me. 14 My kinsfolk have failed, and my close friends have forgotten me. 15 They that dwell in my house, and my maid servants, count me as a stranger, I am an alien in their sight. 16 I called my servant, and he gave me no answer, I entreated him with my mouth. 17 My breath is repulsive to my wife, though I make supplication for the children of my own body. 18 Yea, young children despised me, I arose, and they spoke against me. 19 All my close friends abhorred me, and they whom I loved have turned against me. 20 My bone clings to my skin and to my flesh, and I have escaped by the skin of my teeth. 21 Have pity upon me, have pity upon me, O you my friends, for the hand of God has touched me. 22 Why do you persecute me as God, and are not satisfied with my flesh? 23 O that my words were now written. O that they were printed in a book.
24 that they were engraved with an iron pen and lead in the rock forever. 25 for I know that my Redeemer lives, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. 26 and though after my skin is thus destroyed, yet in my flesh shall I see God. 27 whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold, and not another, though my heart be consumed within me. 28 but you should say, why persecute we him, seeing the root of the matter is found in me. 29 be yourselves afraid of the sword, for wrath brings the punishment of the sword, that you may know there is a judgment. Chapter 20 Second speech of Zophar. One then answered Zophar the Namathite, and said, To therefore do my thoughts cause me to answer, and for this I make haste. Three I have heard the rebuke of my reproach, and the spirit of my understanding causes me to answer. Four know you not this of old, since man was placed upon the earth, five that the triumphing of the wicked is short, and the joy of the hypocrite but for a moment. 6 Though his haughtiness mounts up to the heavens, and his head reaches unto the clouds, 7 Yet he shall perish forever like his own refuse, they who have seen him shall say, Where is he? 8 He shall fly away as a dream, and shall not be found, yea, he shall be chased away as a vision of the night. 9 The eye also which saw him shall see him no more, neither shall his place any more behold him. 10 His children shall seek to please the poor, and his hands shall restore their goods. 11 His bones are full of the sin of his youth, which shall lie down with him in the dust. 12 Though wickedness be sweet in his mouth, though he hide it under his tongue, 13 Though he spare it, and forsake it not, but keep it still within his mouth, 14 Yet his food in his body is soured, it is the gall of asps within him. 15 He has swallowed down riches, and he shall vomit them up again, God shall cast them out of his belly. 16 He shall suck the poison of asps, the viper's tongue shall slay him. 17 He shall not see the rivers, the brooks flowing with honey and butter. 18 That which he labored for shall he restore, and shall not swallow it down, from the proceeds of business he shall not rejoice. 19 Because he has oppressed and has forsaken the poor, because he has violently taken away a house which he built not, 20 Surely he shall not feel quietness in his heart, he shall not save of that which he desired. 21 There shall none of his food be left, therefore shall no man look for his goods. 22 In the fullness of his sufficiency he shall be in distress, every hand of the wicked shall come upon him. 23 When he is about to fill his belly, God shall cast the fury of his wrath upon him, and shall rain it upon him while he is eating. 24 He shall flee from the iron weapon, and the bow of bronze shall strike him through. 25 It is drawn, and comes out of the body, yea, the glittering sword comes out of his gall, terrors are upon him. 26 All darkness shall be laid up for his treasures, a fire not blown upon shall consume him, it shall go ill with him who is left in his tent. 27 The heaven shall reveal his iniquity, and the earth shall rise up against him. 28 The increase of his house shall depart, and his goods shall flow away in the day of his wrath. 29 This is the portion of a wicked man from God, and the heritage appointed unto him by God. Chapter 21, Job Responds to Zophar. 1 But Job answered and said, 2 Hear diligently my speech, and let this be your consolation. 3 Bear with me that I may speak, and after that I have spoken, mock on. 4 As for me, is my complaint to man. And if it were so, why should not my spirit be troubled? 5 Look at me, and be astonished, and lay your hand upon your mouth. 6 Even when I remember I am afraid, and trembling takes hold on my flesh. 7 Why do the wicked live, become old, yea, are mighty in power? 8 Their descendants are established in their sight with them, and their offspring before their eyes. 9 Their houses are safe from fear, neither is the rod of God upon them. 10 Their bull breeds, and fails not, their cow calves, and casts not her calf. 11 They send forth their little ones like a flock, and their children dance. 12 They sing to the tambourine and harp, and rejoice at the sound of the flute. 13 They spend their days in wealth, and in a moment go down to the grave. 
14 Therefore they say unto God, Depart from us, for we desire not the knowledge of your ways. 15 What is the Almighty, that we should serve him? And what profit should we have, if we pray unto him? 16 Lo, their prosperity is not in their hand, the counsel of the wicked is far from me. 17 How often is the lamp of the wicked put out? And how often comes their destruction upon them? God distributes sorrows in his anger. 18 They are as stubble before the wind, and as chaff that the storm carries away. 19 God lays up his iniquity for his children, he recompenses him, and he shall know it. 20 His eyes shall see his destruction, and he shall drink of the wrath of the Almighty. 21 For what pleasure has he in his house after him, when the number of his months is cut off in the midst? 22 Shall any teach God knowledge? Seeing he judges those that are on high. 23 One dies in his full strength, being wholly at ease and quiet. 24 His breasts are full of milk, and his bones are moistened with marrow. 25 And another dies in the bitterness of his soul, and never eats with pleasure. 26 They shall lie down alike in the dust, and the worms shall cover them. 27 Behold, I know your thoughts, and the devices which ye wrongfully imagine against me. 28 For you say, Where is the house of the prince? And where are the dwelling places of the wicked? 29 Have you not asked them that go by the way? And do you not know their evidences, 30 that the wicked are reserved to the day of destruction? They shall be brought forth to the day of wrath. 31 Who shall declare his way to his face? And who shall repay him what he has done? 32 Yet shall he be brought to the grave, and shall remain in the tomb. 33 The clods of the valley shall be sweet unto him, and every man shall follow after him, as there are innumerable gone before him. 34 How then do you comfort me in vain, seeing in your answers there remains falsehood? Chapter 22, Third Speech of Eliphaz 1 Then Eliphaz the Temanite answered and said, 2 Can a man be profitable unto God, as he that is wise may be profitable unto himself? 3 Is it any pleasure to the Almighty, that you are righteous? Or is it gain to him, that you make your ways blameless? 4 Will he reprove you for fear of you? Will he enter with you into judgment? 5 Is not your wickedness great? And your iniquities without end? 6 For you have taken a pledge from your brother for nothing, and stripped the naked of their clothing. 7 You have not given water to the weary to drink, and you have withheld bread from the hungry. 8 But as for the mighty man, he had the earth, and the honorable man dwelt in it. 9 You have sent widows away empty, and the arms of the fatherless have been broken. 10 Therefore snares are round about you, and sudden fear troubles you. 11 Are darkness, that you cannot see, and abundance of waters cover you. 12 Is not God in the height of heaven? And behold the height of the stars, how high they are. 13 And you say, How does God know? Can he judge through the dark cloud? Fourteen thick clouds are a covering to him, that he sees not, and he walks in the circle of heaven. Fifteen have you marked the old way which wicked men have trodden? Sixteen who were cut down before their time, whose foundation was swept away with a flood. Seventeen who said unto God, Depart from us, and what can the Almighty do to us? 18 Yet he filled their houses with good things, but the counsel of the wicked is far from me. 19 The righteous see it, and are glad, and the innocent laugh them to scorn. 20 Surely our substance is not cut down, but the remnant of them the fire consumes. 21 Acquaint now yourself with him, and be at peace, thereby good shall come unto you. 22 Receive, I pray you, the law from his mouth, and lay up his words in your heart. 23 If you return to the Almighty, you shall be built up, you shall put away iniquity far from your tents. 24 Then shall you lay up gold as dust, and the gold of Ophir as the stones of the brooks. 25 Yea, the Almighty shall be your defense, and you shall have plenty of silver. 26 For then shall you have your delight in the Almighty, and shall lift up your face unto God. 27 You shall make your prayer unto him, and he shall hear you, and you shall pay your vows. 
28 You shall also decree a thing, and it shall be established for you, and the light shall shine upon your ways. 29 When men are cast down, then you shall say, There is lifting up, and he shall save the humble person. 30 He shall deliver the innocent man, and he is delivered by the pureness of your hands. Chapter 23 Job will come forth as gold. 1 Then Job answered and said, Two even today is my complaint bitter, my hand is heavy in spite of my groaning. 3 Oh that I knew where I might find him. That I might come even to his seat. 4 I would order my cause before him, and fill my mouth with arguments. 5 I would know the words which he would answer me, and understand what he would say unto me. 6 Will he plead against me with his great power? No, but he would put strength in me. 7 There the righteous might reason with him, so should I be delivered forever from my judge. 8 Behold, I go forward, but he is not there, and backward, but I cannot perceive him. 9 On the left hand, where he does work, but I cannot behold him. He hides himself on the right hand, that I cannot see him. 10 But he knows the way that I take. When he has tested me, I shall come forth as gold. 11 My foot has held fast to his steps, his way have I kept, and not turned aside. 12 Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips, I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. 13 But he is of one mind, and who can turn him? And what his soul desires, even that he does. 14 For he performs the thing that is appointed for me, and many such things are with him. 15 Therefore am I troubled at his presence, when I consider, I am afraid of him. 16 For God makes my heart soft, and the Almighty troubles me. 17 Because I was not cut off before the darkness, neither has he covered the darkness from my face. Chapter 24 God appears unconcerned for wicked. 1 Why, seeing times are not hidden from the Almighty, do they that know him not see his days? Two some remove the landmarks, they violently take away flocks, and feed on them. Three they drive away the donkey of the fatherless, they take the widow's ox for a pledge. Four they drive the needy off the road, the poor of the earth hide themselves together. Five behold, as wild donkeys in the desert, go they forth to their work, rising early for a prey, the wilderness yields food for them and for their children. Six they reap every one his grain in the field, and they gather the vineyard of the wicked. 7 They cause the naked to lodge without clothing, that they have no covering in the cold. 8 They are wet with the showers of the mountains, and embrace the rock for want of a shelter. 9 They pluck the fatherless from the breast, and take a pledge from the poor. 10 They cause him to go naked without clothing, and they take away the sheaves from the hungry. 11 Who make oil within their walls, and tread their winepresses, yet suffer thirst. Twelve men groan from out of the city, and the soul of the wounded cries out, yet God charges not folly to them. Thirteen they are of those that rebel against the light, they know not its ways, nor abide in its paths. Fourteen the murderer rising with the light kills the poor and needy, and in the night is as a thief. Fifteen the eye also of the adulterer waits for the twilight, saying, No eye shall see me, and disguises his face. 16 In the dark they dig through houses, which they had marked for themselves in the daytime, they know not the light. 17 For the morning is to them even as the shadow of death, if one recognizes them, they are in the terrors of the shadow of death. 18 They are swift as the waters, their portion is cursed in the earth, no one turns into the way of the vineyards. 19 Drought and heat consume the snow waters, so does the grave those who have sinned. 20 The womb shall forget him, the worm shall feed sweetly on him, he shall be no more remembered, and wickedness shall be broken as a tree. 21 He evil treats the barren that bears not, and does not good to the widow. 22 He draws also the mighty with his power, he rises up, but no man is sure of life. 23 Though it be given him to be in safety, he rests, yet his eyes are upon their ways. 24 They are exalted for a little while, but are gone and brought low, they are taken out of the way as all others, and cut off as the tops of the ears of grain. 25 And if it be not so now, who will make me a liar, and make my speech worth nothing?
Chapter 25, Third Speech of Bildad One then answered Bildad the Shuite, and said, Two dominion and fear are with him, he makes peace in his high places. Three is there any number to his armies? And upon whom does not his light arise? For how then can man be justified with God? Or how can he be clean that is born of a woman? 5. Behold even to the moon, and it shines not, yea, the stars are not pure in his sight. 6. How much less man, that is a worm, and the son of man, who is a worm. Chapter 26. Job responds to Bildad. 1. But Job answered and said, 2. How have you helped him that is without power? How save you the arm that has no strength? 3. How have you counseled him that has no wisdom? And how have you plentifully declared the thing as it is? For to whom have you uttered words? And whose spirit came from you? Five dead things are formed from under the waters, and the inhabitants thereof. Six shoal is naked before him, and destruction has no covering. Seven he stretches out the north over the empty place, and hangs the earth upon nothing. Eight he binds up the waters in his thick clouds, and the cloud is not torn under them. 9. He holds back the face of his throne, and spreads his cloud upon it. 10. He has drawn a circle on the waters at the boundary where the day and night come together. 11. The pillars of heaven tremble and are astonished at his rebuke. 12. He divides the sea with his power, and by his understanding he strikes through the storm. 13. By his spirit he has adorned the heavens, his hand has pierced the fleeing serpent. 14. Lo, these are only parts of his ways, and how little a whisper is heard of him. But the thunder of his power who can understand. Chapter 27. Job holds fast his righteousness. 1. Moreover Job continued his discourse, and said, 2. As God lives, who has taken away my right, and the Almighty, who has made bitter my soul, 3. All the while my breath is in me, and the Spirit of God is in my nostrils, for my lips shall not speak wickedness, nor my tongue utter deceit. 5. God forbid that I should justify you, till I die I will not remove my integrity from me. 6. My righteousness I hold fast, and will not let it go, my heart shall not reproach me so long as I live. 7. Let my enemy be as the wicked, and he that rises up against me is the unrighteous. 8. For what is the hope of the hypocrite, though he has gained, when God takes away his soul? 9. Will God hear his cry when trouble comes upon him? 10. Will he delight himself in the Almighty? Will he always call upon God? 11. I will teach you by the hand of God, that which is with the Almighty will I not conceal. 12. Behold, all you yourselves have seen it, why then are you thus altogether vain? 13. This is the portion of a wicked man with God, and the heritage of oppressors, which they shall receive of the Almighty. 14. If his children are multiplied, it is for the sword, and his offspring shall not be satisfied with bread. 15. Those that remain of him shall be buried in death, and his widows shall not weep. 16. Though he heap up silver as the dust, and pile up clothing as the clay, 17. He may prepare it, but the just shall put it on, and the innocent shall divide the silver. 18. He builds his house like a moth, and like a booth that the keeper makes. 19. The rich man shall lie down, but he shall not be gathered, he opens his eyes, and he is not. 20. Terrors take hold on him as waters, a tempest steals him away in the night. 21. The east wind carries him away, and he is gone and as a storm hurls him out of his place. 22. For God shall cast upon him, and not spare, he would scarcely flee out of his hand. 23. Men shall clap their hands at him, and shall hiss him out of his place. Chapter 28. Job finds man can't discover wisdom. 1. Surely there is a vein for the silver, and a place for gold where they refine it. 2. Iron is taken out of the earth, and copper is smelted out of the ore. 3. Man sets an end to darkness, and searches out all recesses for ore in darkness, and the shadow of death. 4. He breaks open a shaft away from the inhabitants, even in places forgotten of the foot, they are gone away from men, they swing to and fro. 5. As for the earth, out of it comes bread, but under it is turned up as it were fire. 
6. The stones of it are the place of sapphires, and it has dust of gold. 7. There is a path which no fowl knows, and which the falcon's eye has not seen. 8. The lion's whelps have not trodden it, nor the fierce lion passed by it. 9. He puts forth his hand upon the flinty rock, he overturns the mountains by the roots. 10. He cuts out rivers in the rocks, and his eye sees every precious thing. 11. He binds the streams from overflowing, and the thing that is hid brings he forth to light. 12. But where shall wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding? 13. Man knows not the price thereof, neither is it found in the land of the living. 14. The deep says, It is not in me, and the sea says, It is not with me. 15. It cannot be gotten for gold, neither shall silver be weighed for the price thereof. 16. It cannot be valued with the gold of Ophir, with the precious onyx, or the sapphire. 17. The gold and the crystal cannot equal it, and the exchange of it shall not be for jewels of fine gold. 18. No mention shall be made of coral, or of crystal, for the price of wisdom is above rubies. 19. The topaz of Ethiopia shall not equal it, neither shall it be valued with pure gold. 20. From where then comes wisdom? And where is the place of understanding? 21. Seeing it is hid from the eyes of all living, and concealed from the fowls of the air. 22. Destruction and death say, we have heard the fame of it with our ears. 23. God understands its way, and he knows its place. 24. For he looks to the ends of the earth, and sees under the whole heaven. 25. To make the weight for the wind, and he apportions the waters by measure. 26. When he made a decree for the rain, and a way for the lightning of the thunder. 27. Then did he see it, and declare it, he prepared it, yea, and searched it out. 28. And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. Chapter 29. Job recalls the blessings of his past. 1. Moreover Job continued his discourse, and said, 2. O that I were as in months past, as in the days when God preserved me, 3. When his lamp shined upon my head, and when by his light I walked through darkness, 4. As I was in the days of my youth, when the secret of God was upon my tent, 5. When the Almighty was yet with me, when my children were about me, 6. When I washed my steps with butter, and the rock poured me out rivers of oil, 7. When I went out to the gate of the city, when I prepared my seat in the open square. 8. The young men saw me, and hid themselves, and the aged arose, and stood up. 9. The princes refrained from talking, and laid their hand on their mouth. 10. The nobles held their peace, and their tongue cleaved to the roof of their mouth. 11. When the ear heard me, then it blessed me, and when the eye saw me, it gave witness to me. 12. Because I delivered the poor that cried, and the fatherless, and him that had none to help him. 13. The blessing of him that was ready to perish came upon me, and I caused the widow's heart to sing for joy. 14. I put on righteousness, and it clothed me, my justice was as a robe and a turban. 15. I was eyes to the blind, and feet was I to the lame. 16. I was a father to the poor, and the cause which I knew not I searched out. 17. And I broke the fangs of the wicked, and plucked the spoil out of his teeth. 18. Then I said, I shall die in my nest, and I shall multiply my days as the sand. 19. My root was spread out to the waters, and the dew lay all night upon my branch. 20. My glory was fresh in me, and my bow was renewed in my hand. 21. Unto me men gave ear, and waited, and kept silence at my counsel. 22. After my words they spoke not again, and my speech dropped upon them. 23. And they waited for me as for the rain, and they opened their mouth wide as for the latter rain. 24. If I mocked them, they believed it not, and the light of my countenance they cast not down. 25. I chose out their way, and sat as chief, and dwelt like a king in the army, as one that comforts the mourners. Chapter 30. Job describes his present humiliation. 1. But now they that are younger than I hold me in derision, whose fathers I would have disdained to have set with the dogs of my flock. 2. Yea, how might the strength of their hands profit me, in whom vigor has perished? 
Three from want and famine they are gaunt, fleeing of late into the wilderness, desolate and waste. Four who pick mallows by the bushes, and juniper roots for their food. Five they were driven forth from among men, they cried after them as after a thief, six to dwell in the clefts of the valleys, in caves of the earth, and in the rocks. Seven among the bushes they braid, under the nettles they were gathered together. Eight they were children of fools, yea, children of base men, they were viler than the earth. Nine and now am I their song, yea, I am their byword. Ten they abhor me, they flee far from me, and hesitate not to spit in my face. Eleven because he has loosed my cord, and afflicted me, they have also cast off restraint before me. Twelve upon my right hand rise the youth, they push away my feet, and they raise up against me the ways of their destruction. Thirteen they mar my path, they set forward my calamity, they have no helper. Fourteen they came upon me as a wide breaking in of waters, in the desolation they rolled themselves upon me. Fifteen terrors are turned upon me, they pursue my honor as the wind, and my welfare passes away as a cloud. Sixteen and now my soul is poured out upon me, the days of affliction have taken hold upon me. Seventeen my bones are pierced in me in the night season, and my sinews take no rest. Eighteen by the great force of my disease is my garment changed, it binds me about as the collar of my coat. Nineteen he has cast me into the mire, and I am become like dust and ashes. Twenty I cry unto you, and you do not hear me. I stand up, and you regard me not. Twenty-one you have become cruel to me, with your strong hand you oppose yourself against me. Twenty-two you lift me up to the wind, you cause me to ride upon it, and spoil my substance. Twenty-three for I know that you will bring me to death, and to the house appointed for all living. Twenty-four yet he will not stretch out his hand to the grave, though they cry out in his destruction. 25 Did I not weep for him that was in trouble? Was not my soul grieved for the poor? 26 When I looked for good, then evil came unto me, and when I waited for light, there came darkness. 27 My heart is in turmoil, and rests not, the days of affliction confront me. 28 I went mourning but not in the sun, I stood up, and I cried in the congregation. 29 I am a brother to jackals, and a companion to ostriches. 30 My skin is black upon me, and my bones are burned with heat. 31 My harp also is turned to mourning, and my flute into the voice of them that weep. Chapter 31 Job is innocent of sins of the flesh. When I made a covenant with my eyes, why then should I think upon a maiden? 2 For what portion of God is there from above? And what inheritance of the Almighty from on high? Three is not destruction to the wicked, and a disaster to the workers of iniquity. Four does not he see my ways, and count all my steps. Five if I have walked with vanity, or if my foot has hastened to deceit, six let me be weighed in an even balance, that God may know my integrity. Seven if my step has turned out of the way, and my heart walked after my eyes, and if any spot has cleaved to my hands, eight then let me sow, and let another eat, yea, let my offspring be rooted out. Nine if my heart has been deceived by a woman, or if I have laid wait at my neighbor's door, ten then let my wife grind for another, and let others bow down upon her. Eleven for this is a heinous crime, yea, it is an iniquity to be punished by the judges. 12 For it is a fire that consumes to destruction, and would root out all my increase. Job is innocent of cruelty to the needy. 13 If I did despise the cause of my manservant or of my maidservant, when they contended with me, 14 What then shall I do when God rises up? And when he comes, what shall I answer him? 15 Did not he that made me in the womb make him? And did not one fashion us in the womb? 16 If I have withheld the poor from their desire, or have caused the eyes of the widow to fail, 17 Or have eaten my morsel alone, and the fatherless has not eaten of it, 18 For from my youth he was brought up with me, as with a father, 
and I have guided him from my mother's womb. 19 If I have seen any perish for want of clothing, or any poor without covering, 20 If his heart has not blessed me, and if he was not warmed with the fleece of my sheep, 21 If I have lifted up my hand against the fatherless. When I saw I had help in the gate, 22 Then let my arm fall from my shoulder blade, and my arm be broken from its socket. 23 For destruction from God was a terror to me, and by reason of his majesty I could not endure. Job is innocent of putting confidence in God. 24 If I have made gold my hope, or have said to the fine gold, you are my confidence. 25 If I rejoiced because my wealth was great, and because my hand had gotten much. 26 If I beheld the sun when it shined, or the moon moving in brightness. 27 And my heart has been secretly enticed, or my mouth has kissed my hand. 28 This also would be an iniquity to be punished by the judge, for I should have denied the God that is above. Job is innocent of rejoicing in the sufferings. 29 If I rejoiced at the destruction of him that hated me, or lifted up myself when evil found him, 30 Neither have I suffered my mouth to sin by wishing a curse to his soul. 31 If the men of my tent have not, oh that we had of his meat. We cannot be satisfied. 32 The stranger did not lodge in the street, but I opened my doors to the traveler. 33 If I covered my transgressions as Adam, by hiding my iniquity in my bosom. 34 Did I fear a great multitude, or did the contempt of families terrify me, that I kept silence, and went not out of the door? Job pleads to meet God and defend himself. 35 Oh that one would hear me. Behold, my desire is, that the Almighty would answer me, and that my adversary had written a book. 36 Surely I would take it upon my shoulder, and bind it as a crown to me. 37 I would declare unto him the number of my steps, as a prince would I go near unto him. 38 If my land cries against me, and its furrows likewise complain, 39 If I have eaten its fruit without payment, or have caused its owners to lose their life, 40 Let thistles grow instead of wheat, and weeds instead of barley. The words of Job are ended. Chapter 32 Elihu responds to the older men. Once of these three men ceased to answer Job, because he was righteous in his own eyes. Two then was kindled the wrath of Elihu the son of Barachel the Buzite, of the family of Ram, against Job was his wrath aroused, because he justified himself rather than God. Three also against his three friends was his wrath aroused, because they had found no answer, and yet had condemned Job. For now Elihu had waited till Job had spoken, because they were older than he. 5. When Elihu saw that there was no answer in the mouth of these three men, then his wrath was aroused. 6. And Elihu the son of Barachel the Buzite answered and said, I am young, and you are very old, therefore I was afraid, and dared not show you my opinion. 7. I said, Days should speak, and multitude of years should teach wisdom. 8. But there is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty gives him understanding. 9. Great men are not always wise, neither do the aged understand justice. 10. Therefore I say, hearken to me, I also will show my opinion. 11. Behold, I waited for your words, I gave ear to your reasons, while you searched out what to say. 12. Yea, I attended unto you, and, behold, there was none of you that convinced Job, or that answered his words. 13. Lest you should say, we have found out wisdom. God vanquishes him, not man. 14. Now he has not directed his words against me, neither will I answer him with your speeches. 15. They were amazed, they answered no more, they left off speaking. 16. When I had waited, for they spoke not, but stood still, and answered no more. 17. I said, I will answer also my part, I also will show my opinion. 18. For I am full of words, the spirit within me constrains me. 19. Behold, my belly is as wine which has no vent, it is ready to burst like new wineskins. 20. I will speak, that I may be refreshed, I will open my lips and answer. 21. Let me not, I pray you, accept any man's person, neither let me give flattery unto man. 22. For I know not how to give flattery, in so doing my Maker would soon take me away. 
Chapter 33 Elihu asks Job to hear to his speech. 1 Therefore, Job, I pray you, hear my speeches, and hearken to all my words. 2 Behold, now I have opened my mouth, my tongue has spoken in my mouth. 3 My words shall be of the uprightness of my heart, and my lips shall utter knowledge clearly. For the Spirit of God has made me, and the breath of the Almighty has given me life. 5 If you can answer me, set your words in order before me, stand up. 6 Behold, I am according to your wish in God's stead, I also am formed out of the clay. 7 Behold, my terror shall not make you afraid, neither shall my hand be heavy upon you. Elihu recites Job's complaints. 8 Surely you have spoken in my hearing, and I have heard the voice of your words, saying, 9 I am clean without transgression, I am innocent, neither is there iniquity in me. 10 Behold, he finds occasions against me, he counts me for his enemy, 11 He puts my feet in the stocks, he marks all my paths. Elihu answers Job's complaints. 12 Behold, in this you are not just, I will answer you, for God is greater than man. 13. Why do you strive against him? For he gives not account of any of his matters. 14. For God speaks once, yea twice, yet man perceives it not. 15. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men, in slumberings upon the bed. 16. Then he opens the ears of men, and seals their instruction. 17. That he may turn man from his purpose, and hide pride from man. 18. He keeps back his soul from the pit, and his life from perishing by the sword. 19. He is chastened also with pain upon his bed, and the multitude of his bones with strong pain. 20. So that his life abhors bread, and his soul the choicest food. 21. His flesh is consumed away, that it cannot be seen, and his bones that were not seen now stick out. 22. Yea, his soul draws near unto the grave, and his life to those who bring death. 23. If there be a messenger with him, a mediator, one of a thousand, to show unto man his uprightness, 24. Then he is gracious unto him, and says, Deliver him from going down to the pit, I have found a ransom. 25. His flesh shall be younger than a child's, he shall return to the days of his youth. 26. He shall pray unto God, and he will be favorable unto him, and he shall see his face with joy, for he will render unto man his righteousness. 27. He looks upon men, and if any say, I have sinned, and perverted that which was right, and it profited me not, 28. He will deliver his soul from going into the pit, and his life shall see the light. 29. Lo, all these things works God twice, three times, with man, 30. To bring back his soul from the pit, to be enlightened with the light of life. 31. Mark well, O Job, hearken unto me, hold your peace, and I will speak. 32. If you have anything to say, answer me, speak, for I desire to justify you. 33. If not, hearken unto me, hold your peace, and I shall teach you wisdom. Chapter 34. Elihu asks again to hear to his words. 1. Furthermore Elihu answered and said, 2. Hear my words, O you wise men, and give ear unto me, you that have knowledge. 3. For the ear tests words, as the mouth tastes food. 4. Let us choose for us justice, let us know among ourselves what is good. Elihu recites Job's complaints. 5. For Job has said, I am righteous, and God has taken away my justice. 6. Should I lie concerning my right? My wound is incurable though I am without transgression. 7. What man is like Job, who drinks up scorn like water? 8. Who goes in company with the workers of iniquity, and walks with wicked men? 9. For he has said, It profits a man nothing that he should delight himself with God. Elihu answers Job's complaints. 10. Therefore hearken unto me, you men of understanding, far be it from God, that he should do wickedness, and from the Almighty, that he should commit iniquity. 11. For the work of a man shall he render unto him, and cause every man to find according to his ways. 12. Yea, Surely God will not do wickedly, neither will the Almighty pervert justice. 13. Who has given him charge over the earth? Or who has laid on him the whole world? 
14 If he should set his heart upon man, if he should gather unto himself his spirit and his breath, 15 All flesh would perish together, and man would turn again unto dust. 16 If now you have understanding, hear this, hearken to the voice of my words. 17 Shall even he that hates right govern? And will you condemn him that is most just? 18 Is it fit to say to a king, you are wicked? And to princes, you are ungodly. 19 How much less to him that regards not the persons of princes, nor regards the rich more than the poor. For they all are the work of his hands. 20 In a moment shall they die, and the people shall be troubled at midnight, and pass away, and the mighty shall be taken away without a hand. 21 For his eyes are upon the ways of man, and he sees all his steps. 22 There is no darkness, nor shadow of death, where the workers of iniquity may hide themselves. 23 For he will not lay upon man more than what is right, that he should enter into judgment with God. 24 He shall break in pieces mighty men without number, and set others in their place. 25 Therefore he knows their works, and he overturns them in the night, so that they are destroyed. 26 He strikes them as wicked men in the open sight of others, 27 Because they turned back from him, and would not consider any of his ways, 28 So that they cause the cry of the poor to come unto him, and he hears the cry of the afflicted. 29 When he gives quietness, who then can make trouble? And when he hides his face, who then can behold him? Whether it be done against a nation, or against a man only, 30 That the hypocrite reigns not, lest the people be ensnared. 31 Surely it is fitting to be said unto God, I have borne chastisement, I will not offend any more. 32 That which I see not you teach me, if I have done iniquity, I will do no more. 33 Should it be according to your mind? He will recompense it, whether you refuse, or whether you choose, and not I, therefore declare what you know. 34 Let men of understanding tell me, and let a wise man hearken unto me. 35 Job has spoken without knowledge, and his words were without wisdom. 36 My desire is that Job may be tried unto the end because he answers like wicked men. 37 For he adds rebellion unto his sin, he claps his hands among us, and multiplies his words against God. Chapter 35 Third Speech of Elihu one Elihu spoke moreover, and said, Two think you this to be right, that you said, My righteousness is more than God's. Three for you said, What advantage will it be unto you? And, What profit shall I have, if I be cleansed from my sin? Four I will answer you, and your companions with you. Five look unto the heavens, and see, and behold the clouds which are higher than you. Six if you sin, what do you accomplish against him? Or if your transgressions are multiplied, what do you do unto him? 7. If you are righteous, what give you to him? Or what receives he of your hand? 8. Your wickedness may hurt a man as you are, and your righteousness may profit the son of man. 9. Because of the multitude of oppressions they make the oppressed to cry, they cry out because of the arm of the mighty. 10. But none says, Where is God my Maker, who gives songs in the night? 11 Who teaches us more than the beasts of the earth, and makes us wiser than the fowls of heaven. 12 There they cry, but none gives answer, because of the pride of evil men. 13 Surely God will not hear vanity, neither will the Almighty regard it. 14 Although you say you shall not see him, yet justice is before him, therefore you must trust in him. 15 But now, because it is not so, he has visited in his anger, yet he knows it not in a great extreme. 16 Therefore does Job open his mouth in vain, he multiplies words without knowledge. Chapter 36 Elihu believes God is disciplining Job. 1 Elihu also proceeded, and said, To bear with me a little, and I will show you that I have yet to speak on God's behalf. 3 I will get my knowledge from afar, and will ascribe righteousness to my Maker. 4 For truly my words shall not be false, he that is blameless in knowledge is with you. 5 Behold, God is mighty, and despises no one, he is mighty in strength and wisdom. 6 He preserves not the life of the wicked, but gives justice to the poor. 7 He withdraws not his eyes from the righteous, 
but with kings they are on the throne, yea, he does establish them forever, and they are exalted. Aden if they are bound in fetters, and are held in cords of affliction, nine then he shows them their work, and their transgressions, that they have exceeded. Ten he opens also their ear to discipline, and commands that they return from iniquity. Eleven if they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity, and their years in pleasures. Twelve but if they obey not, they shall perish by the sword, and they shall die without knowledge. 13 But the hypocrites in heart heap up wrath, they cry not when he binds them. 14 They die in youth, and their life is among the unclean. 15 He delivers the poor in his affliction, and opens their ears in oppression. 16 Even so would he have removed you out of the distress into a broad place, where there is no restraint, and that which should be set on your table should be full of richness. 17 But you have fulfilled the judgment of the wicked judgment and justice take hold on you. 18 Because there is wrath, beware lest he take you away with one blow, then a great ransom cannot deliver you. 19 Will he esteem your riches? No, not gold, nor all the forces of strength. 20 Desire not the night, when people are cut off in their place. 21 Take heed, regard not iniquity, for this have you chosen rather than affliction. Elihu reminds Job of the greatness of God. 22 Behold, God exalts by his power, who teaches like him. 23 Who has prescribed him his way? Or who can say, you have worked iniquity? 24 Remember that you magnify his work, which men behold. 25 Every man may see it, man may behold it afar off. 26 Behold, God is great, and we know him not neither can the number of his years be searched out. 27 For he makes small the drops of water, they pour down rain according to its vapor, 28 Which the clouds do drop and pour upon man abundantly. 29 Also can any understand the spreadings of the clouds, or the thunder of his tabernacle. 30 Behold, he spreads his lightning upon it, and covers the depths of the sea. 31 For by them judges he the people, he gives food in abundance. 32 With clouds he covers the light, and commands it not to shine by the cloud that comes between. 33 The thunder thereof declares it, the cattle also, concerning the vapor. Chapter 37 1 At this also my heart trembles, and is moved out of its place. 2 Hear attentively the noise of his voice, and the sound that goes out of his mouth. 3. He directs it under the whole heaven, and his lightning unto the ends of the earth. 4. After it a voice roars, he thunders with the voice of his excellency, and he will not restrain them when his voice is heard. 5. God thunders marvelously with his voice, great things does he, which we cannot comprehend. 6. For he says to the snow, be on the earth, likewise to the gentle rain, and to the heavy rain of his strength. 7. He seals up the hand of every man, that all men may know his work. 8. Then the beasts go into dens, and remain in their places. 9. Out of the south comes the whirlwind, and cold out of the north. 10. By the breath of God ice is given, and the broad waters are frozen. 11. Also with moisture he loads the thick cloud, he scatters his bright cloud. 12. And it is turned around by his guidance that they may do whatsoever he commands them upon the face of the whole earth. 13. He causes it to come, whether for correction, or for his land, or for mercy. 14. Hearken unto this, O Job, stand still, and consider the wondrous works of God. 15. Do you know when God dispatched them, and caused the light of his cloud to shine? 16. Do you know the balancings of the clouds, the wondrous works of him who is blameless in knowledge? 17. How your garments are warm, when he quiets the earth by the south wind. 18. Have you with him spread out the sky, which is strong, and is a molten mirror. 19. Teach us what we shall say unto him, for we cannot order our speech because of darkness. 20. Shall it be told him that I speak? If a man speaks, surely he shall be swallowed up. 21 And now men can not look on the bright light which is in the clouds, but the wind passes, and clears them. 22 Fair weather comes out of the north, with God as awesome majesty. 
23 As for the Almighty, we cannot find him out. He is excellent in power, and in judgment, and in abundant justice, he will not afflict. 24 Men do therefore fear him, he respects not any that are wise of heart. Chapter 38 God questions Job from the realms of creation. 1 Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind, and said, 2 Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? 3 Gird up now your loins like a man, for I will demand of you, and you answer me. 4 Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare, if you have understanding. 5 Who has determined the measures thereof, if you know? Or who has stretched the line upon it? 6 On what are its foundations fastened? Or who laid its cornerstone, seven when the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Eight or who shut up the sea with doors, when it broke forth, as if it had issued out of the womb. Nine when I made the clouds its garment, and thick darkness its swaddling band, ten and prescribed bounds for it, and set bars and doors, eleven and said, Thus far shall you come, but no farther, and here shall your proud waves be stopped. 12 Have you commanded the morning since your days began, and caused the dawn to know its place, 13 That it might take hold of the ends of the earth, that the wicked might be shaken out of it. 14 It is turned as clay under the seal, and they stand out as a garment. 15 And from the wicked their light is withheld, and the uplifted arm shall be broken. 16 Have you entered into the springs of the sea? Or have you walked in search of the depths? 17 Have the gates of death been revealed unto you? Or have you seen the doors of the shadow of death? 18 Have you perceived the breadth of the earth? Declare if you know it all. 19 Where is the way where light dwells? And as for darkness, where is its place? 20 That you should take it to its domain, and that you should know the paths to its home. 21 Do you know it, because you were born then? Or because the number of your days is great? 22 Have you entered into the treasury of the snow? Or have you seen the treasury of the hail? 23 Which I have reserved against the time of trouble, against the day of battle and war. 24 By what way is the light distributed, which scatters the east wind upon the earth? 25 Who has divided a channel for the overflowing of waters, or a way for the lightning of thunder? 26 To cause it to rain on the earth, where no man is? on the wilderness, in which there is no man, 27 to satisfy the desolate and waste ground, and to cause the bud of the tender grass to spring forth. 28 has the rain a father? Or who has begotten the drops of dew? 29 out of whose womb came the ice? And the frost from heaven, who has given it birth? 30 the waters harden like a stone, and the face of the deep is frozen. 31 Can you bind the cluster of Pleiades, or loose the bands of Orion? 32 Can you bring forth Maseroth in its season? Or can you guide Arcturus with its children? 33 Know you the ordinances of heaven? Can you set their dominion in the earth? 34 Can you lift up your voice to the clouds, that abundance of waters may cover you? 35 Can you send lightnings, that they may go, and say unto you, Here we are. 36 Who has put wisdom in the inward parts? Or who has given understanding to the heart? 37 Who can number the clouds by wisdom? Or who can pour out the water skins of heaven? 38 When the dust grows into clumps, and the clods cleave fast together. God questions Job from the realms of animals. 39 Will you hunt the prey for the lion? or satisfy the appetite of the young lions, forty when they crouch in their dens, and abide in their lairs to lie in wait. Forty one who provides for the raven its food. When its young ones cry unto God, they wander about for lack of food. Chapter 39. 1. Know you the time when the wild goats of the rock bring forth? Or can you mark when the hinds do calve? 2. Can you number the months that they fulfill? Or know you the time when they bring forth? 3. They bow themselves, they bring forth their young ones, they cast out their offspring. 4. Their young ones become strong, they grow up in the open, they go forth, and return not unto them. 5. Who has let the wild donkey go free? Or who has loosed the bonds of the wild donkey? 6. Whose house I have made the wilderness, and the barren land his dwellings.
7 He scorns the multitude of the city, neither regards he the shouts of the driver. 8 The range of the mountains is his pasture, and he searches after every green thing. 9 Will the wild ox be willing to serve you, or abide by your crib? 10 Can you bind the wild ox with ropes in the furrow? Or will he plow the valleys behind you? 11 Will you trust him, because his strength is great? Or will you leave your labor to him? 12 Will you believe him, that he will bring home your grain, and gather it into your barn? 13 Gave you the proud wings unto the peacocks? Or wings and feathers unto the ostrich? 14 Which leaves her eggs in the earth, and warms them in dust? 15 And forgets that the foot may crush them, or that a wild beast may break them? 16 She is hardened against her young ones, as though they were not hers, her labor is in vain without concern, 17 Because God has deprived her of wisdom, neither has he imparted to her understanding. 18 When she lifts up herself high, she scorns the horse and his rider. 19 Have you given the horse strength? Have you clothed his neck with thunder? 20 Can you make him afraid like a grasshopper? The majesty of his snorting is terrible. 21 He paws in the valley, and rejoices in his strength, he goes out to meet the armed men. 22 He mocks at fear, and is not frightened, neither turns he back from the sword. 23 The quiver rattles against him, the glittering spear and the javelin. 24 He swallows the ground with fierceness and rage, neither does he halt at the sound of the trumpet. 25 He says among the trumpets, Aha, and he smells the battle afar off, the thunder of the captains, and the shouting. 26 Does the hawk fly by your wisdom, and stretch her wings toward the south? 27 Does the eagle mount up at your command, and make her nest on high? 28 She dwells and abides on the rock, upon the crag of the rock, and the stronghold. 29 From there she seeks the prey, and her eyes behold afar off. 30 Her young ones also suck up blood, and where the slain are, there is she. Chapter 40 God demands an answer. One moreover the Lord answered Job, and said, Two shall he that contends with the Almighty instruct him. He that reproves God, let him answer it. First answer of Job to God. Three then Job answered the Lord, and said, For behold, I am vile, what shall I answer you? I will lay my hand upon my mouth. Five once have I spoken, but I will not answer, yea, twice, but I will proceed no further. God tells Job to save himself. 6 Then answered the Lord unto Job out of the whirlwind, and said, 7 Gird up your loins now like a man, I will demand of you, and declare you unto me. 8 Will you also annul my judgment? Will you condemn me, that you may be righteous? 9 Have you an arm like God? Or can you thunder with a voice like him? 10 Deck yourself now with majesty and splendor, and array yourself with glory and beauty. 11. Put forth the rage of your wrath, and behold every one that is proud, and abase him. 12. Look on every one that is proud, and bring him low, and tread down the wicked in their place. 13. Hide them in the dust together, and bind their faces in secret. 14. Then will I also confess unto you that your own right hand can save you. God compares Job to the power of Behemoth. 15. Behold now Behemoth, which I made with you, he eats grass as an ox. 16 Lo now, his strength is in his loins, and his force is in the muscles of his belly. 17 He moves his tail like a cedar, the sinews of his thighs are knit together. 18 His bones are as strong pieces of bronze, his bones are like bars of iron. 19 He is the first of the ways of God, he that made him can make his sword to approach unto him. 20 Surely the mountains bring him forth food, where all the beasts of the field play. 21 He lies under the shady trees, in the hiding of the reeds, and marsh. 22 The shady trees cover him with their shade, the willows of the brook surround him. 23 Behold, though a river rages, he fears not, he is confident though the Jordan rushes into his mouth. 24 He takes it with his eyes, his nose pierces through snares. Chapter 41, God compares Job to the Leviathan. 1. Can you draw out Leviathan with a hook? Or his tongue with a cord which you let down? 
Two can you put a rope in his nose? Or pierce his jaw through with a hook? Three will he make many supplications unto you? Will he speak soft words unto you? Four will he make a covenant with you? Will you take him for a servant forever? Five will you play with him as with a bird? Or will you leash him for your maidens? Six shall your companions make a banquet of him? Shall they apportion him among the merchants? Seven can you fill his skin with harpoons? Or his head with fish spears? Eight lay your hand upon him, remember the battle, do no more. Nine behold, the hope of subduing him is in vain, shall one not be cast down even at the sight of him? Ten none is so fierce that would dare stir him up, who then is able to stand before me? Eleven who has given to me, that I should repay him. Whatsoever is under the whole heaven is mine. Twelve I will not conceal his limbs, nor his power, nor his graceful proportion. Thirteen who can remove the face of his garment? Or who can approach him with a double bridle? Fourteen who can open the doors of his face? His teeth are terrible all around. Fifteen his scales are his pride, shut up together as with a close seal. Sixteen one is so near to another, that no air can come between them. Seventeen they are joined one to another, they stick together, that they cannot be parted. Eighteen by his sneezings a light flashes, and his eyes are like the eyelids of the morning. Nineteen out of his mouth go burning lamps, and sparks of fire leap out. Twenty out of his nostrils goes smoke, as out of a boiling pot or cauldron. Twenty-one his breath kindles coals, and a flame goes out of his mouth. Twenty-two in his neck remains strength, and sorrow is turned into dancing before him. Twenty-three the folds of his flesh are joined together, they are firm on him, they cannot be moved. Twenty-four his heart is as firm as a stone, yea, as hard as a piece of the lower millstone. Twenty-five when he raises up himself, the mighty are afraid, because of his crashings they are beside themselves. Twenty-six the sword of him that reaches him cannot avail, neither the spear, the dart, nor the javelin. Twenty-seven he regards iron as straw, and bronze as rotten wood. Twenty-eight the arrow cannot make him flee, clingstones with him are turned into stubble. Twenty-nine darts are counted as straw, he laughs at the threat of a javelin. Thirty his undersides are like sharp stones, he spreads sharp pointed marks upon the mire. Thirty-one he makes the deep boil like a pot, he makes the sea like a pot of ointment. Thirty-two he leaves a path shining after him, one would think the deep to have white hair. Thirty-three upon earth there is not his like, which is made without fear. Thirty-four he beholds every high thing, he is a king over all the children of pride. Chapter 42, Job confesses he doesn't understand. One then Job answered the Lord, and said, Two I know that you can do everything, and that no thought can be withheld from you. Three who is he that hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered what I understood not, things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. Job repents. For here, I ask you, and I will speak, I will question you, and you declare unto me. 5. I have heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye sees you. 6. Therefore I abhor myself, and repent in dust and ashes. The Deliverance of Job and His Friends 7. And it was so, that after the Lord had spoken these words unto Job, the Lord said to Eliphaz the Temanite, My wrath is kindled against you, and against your two friends, for you have not spoken of me the thing that is right, as my servant Job has. 8. Therefore take unto you now seven bullocks and seven rams, and go to my servant Job, and offer up for yourselves a burnt offering, and my servant Job shall pray for you, for him will I accept lest I deal with you after your folly, in that you have not spoken of me the thing which is right, like my servant Job. 9. So Eliphaz the Temanite and Bildad the Shuite and Zophar the Namathite went, and did according as the Lord commanded them, the Lord also accepted Job. 10. And the Lord restored the fortunes of Job, when he prayed for his friends, also the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Eleven then came there unto him all his brethren, and all his sisters, and all they that had been of his acquaintance before, and did eat bread with him in his house, 
and they consoled him, and comforted him over all the trouble that the Lord had brought upon him. Every man also gave him a piece of money, and every one a ring of gold. 12. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning, for he had fourteen thousand sheep, and six thousand camels, and a thousand yoke of oxen, and a thousand female donkeys. 13. He had also seven sons and three daughters. 14. And he called the name of the first, Jemima, and the name of the second, Keziah, and the name of the third, Karen Hapich. 15. And in all the land were no women found so beautiful as the daughters of Job, and their father gave them inheritance among their brethren. 16. After this lived Job a hundred and forty years, and saw his sons, and his sons' sons, even four generations. 17. So Job died, being old and full of days.